Hi everyone, this is U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharifa Tharp and I am here live to take your U.S. Immigration related questions. So go ahead and put your questions in the comments right now so that I may answer your questions. So let me formally introduce myself. I'm U.S. Immigration Attorney Sharifa Tharp and I help clients to get their green card and status in the United States. So if you have a U.S. immigration issue that you're going through, you're thinking about a US, uh, applying for an immigration benefit, such as a green card or a visa, or you have even been through the process and you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comments now so that I may answer your questions. So you can always go to the link in my bio if you want to learn more about me, a U.S. immigration attorney, as well as the law firm, uh, what I do, how I've helped uh, individuals, how I can help you. And then you can contact the office at 561-405-4889. The phone number is uh, listed on, uh, on the website and it's also on every video that I do. So you can always take the information from there and go ahead and um, schedule a consultation. Now today I'm briefly going to touch on applying for U.S. citizenship. What does that take? So applying for U.S. citizenship, before you apply for U.S. citizenship, you must be a green card holder. So that's the first thing. You must qualify. You can't jump from having a non-immigrant uh, status to becoming a U.S. citizen. Uh, you must be a green card holder, otherwise a permanent resident, to be able to qualify for U.S. citizenship. Now, uh, before I go any further, I just want to let those of you who know, who are watching, that you can come on here and answer, ask your questions. That's exactly why I'm here. I'm here to answer your questions. So go ahead. You can put your questions in the comments. Um, even as I'm talking, I usually bring a topic to talk about as well while your questions come in, but you and your questions are my priority. So feel free to put questions in. It can be related to the topic and it doesn't have to be related to the topic. It can be anything else that you would like to ask a question about, about that's immigration related. Today, I'm talking about the path from going from a green card holder to a U.S. citizen. What is that? Uh, what does it entail? Who qualifies? So the first is if you're a green card holder, at what point can you apply for U.S. citizenship? That's exciting. And I also want to tell you now is a good time to do it. Um, many of my cases right now are going through at maximum six months. Now keep in mind that does not mean that that's the case for everybody. But the average time it's taking right now is six months for, in the, for my clients to get through. The shortest time I've seen so far in multiple of my cases is two months to get to the interview from the time of applying to the actual interview. So now is the time to apply. So do you qualify for US citizenship? Now, do you have, uh, and this is valuable for everybody. So even if you don't have your green card yet, you, it's still very informative because you could still know once you do become a permanent resident, what will that journey be like to go from permanent residence to U.S. citizenship? But keep in mind, if you're going through something completely different and you have a question, feel free to put your questions in the comments because that's why I'm here ultimately is to answer your questions. And that's what I do. I help clients to get their green cards and status in the United States. Thanks, Shelly Ann Moody, for sharing the live. I appreciate that. So now, um, it, once you become a green card holder, how long do you have to wait before applying for U.S. citizenship? So the general time is five years. However, there are circumstances under which you could apply in a shorter period of time. So if you've been married to a U.S. citizen, then um, a U.S. citizen, then three years. And guess what? There is a bonus to this. You can apply in two years and nine months. You can apply at the two year and nine month mark. Same uh, now if you have obtained your green card through any other way. Um, now, keep in mind that you don't have to get the green card through the U.S. citizen. You just have to be married to a U.S. citizen to apply for U.S. citizenship in three years. 
Now, if you got your green card any other way, and this on the military is even shorter, so um, it, it could be a year. Now, if you've obtained your permanent residence through any other way, through employment or other family members other than a US citizen spouse, it's going to be five years, and you can apply at the four year and nine month mark. So that's exciting. If you know that you're coming up on that time or you've even passed that time, now is the time to apply. Let's see if you qualify in other ways because you also have to meet other qualifications. Now, if you are, um, the next thing, important thing is you have to show continuous residence in the United States, that you've continuously been living in the United States in the past um, five years, if you're applying based on a five year period, three years if you've been applying, if you're applying on a three year period, you also have to show physical presence for half of that time. So meaning you have to show that you've been physically present in the United States. And that's by showing your taxes, by showing um, your travel dates. For example, you do have to log your travel dates. And if your travel dates are, you know, seven days uh, out of a year or seven days out of the entire period of time, then guess what? You have met the continuous presence and the, the physical presence. Because where it becomes a problem is if you have been outside of the United States for more than six months in a year, that's going to be a problem. And it's uh, now when, when that happens, it's presumed that you, ab you abandoned permanent residence and they, the officer could deny you on that basis. However, you can prove the officer wrong by showing that no, you continue to, um, co uh, continue to maintain your residence in the United States, even though you had to be out of the country for more than six months. However, if you've been outside of the country for more than a year, that's going to be a problem. Um, so keep that in mind and get legal advice. If these are issues that are familiar to you, you want to get legal advice to make sure that um, you don't run into any problems or to make sure that you are protected, you know how to approach these problems. Now, once you've shown, you've con shown continuous residence, physical presence in the United States, and you also have to show good moral character. Now, I know we all believe that we're good people, and um, that is great, right? You always, um, we all think we're good people. But now, the thing is, uh, there, are, there may be things in our background that may um, cause the officer to think otherwise. So it's very important that you understand that. So for example, if something, if there was a criminal issue in your background, that could possibly um, cause a problem, um, cause a problem with the the uh, evaluation and your qualification for citizenship because the officer uh, it is based on the law, of course, but the officer is going to look at look at the facts of the case and just determine whether your that criminal issue uh, means that you lack good moral character. So I cannot stress it enough. If you have a criminal issue. As minor as it may seem, if it's uh, if it's um, if you have an issue with um, sure. So Tia, go ahead, put your questions in the comments. Now, at the end of the day, that's why I'm here. I'm here to answer any immigration related questions. So as long as it's immigration related, I am going to answer your questions. So go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, the officer is going to evaluate the criminal issue and as minor as it may seem, it may under immigration law, it may not be uh, as minor. So for example, you may be convicted of a misdemeanor, but under immigration law and based on the facts involved, it may be seen as a more severe uh, crime under immigration law and there may be more severe consequences. So very important. Now, it's always on a case by case basis with these types. Um, so it's very important that you um, get an evaluation to make sure you're protected, that there's someone who can advocate for you during your citizenship to make sure um, to advise you whether you qualify. And, and if you do have a shot to make sure that you have an advocate to help you through that process. 
Now, if you don't have any criminal issues, there are other non-criminal issues that can prevent you from getting citizenship that you want us to be wary of. So the first is, um, the first is, if you have a history of alcoholism, um, DUIs that could lead, and DUIs are criminal as well. So that would fall under criminal. But if, for example, something comes out that you are an alcoholic, uh, it's in other words, a habitual drunk, that could be a problem. Um, if you, uh, here's a surprising one. If you were um, committed adultery then, if you had an affair and that affair led to the termination of your marriage and it's blatantly clear that that led to the, the termination or the separation in your marriage, that can actually lead to a determination that you lack good moral character. Delinquent tax returns or delinquent taxes, delinquent child support, those can also lead the officer. There may be hope and you want to make sure that you sift through those issues with an immigration attorney such as myself. You can call, schedule a consultation. So let's see, uh, Tia, uh, let's see. So me and my husband are legal married, but we separated. Can me and daughter go in to apply for a visa? Uh, so it depends on what type of visa um, you're talking about. Now, usually, uh, you it is within your right to apply for a visa. So Tia, if you're outside of the United States and you want to apply for a visa, you can definitely um, do that. Uh, the divorce may or may not play into, uh, I mean, not divorce, the separation in your case. Um, but it depends on what type of visa you're applying for. Um, and you know, you're, you know, at the end of the day, when you're applying for a visa, it's not necessarily even your marital status, but it depends on your ties in your home country. Um, will the officer wants to know that, uh, that you have enough ties in your country that you will be compelled to return to your country, um, after a temporary visit to the U S if we're talking about a visitor's visa. Um, how do I apply for a social and work permit before applying for permanent residence in the United States? Great question. And I'm glad I can explain this to you. So you just got married and you are actually, when you get married to a U.S. citizen, you apply and, and you qualify for adjustment of status. So you, before, um, you can, you have to determine that you qualify for adjustment of status. If you are married to a U.S. citizen, you came in with a visa, generally speaking, you could possibly apply for adjustment of status. Now, once you apply for adjustment of status, it's usually the case that you can apply for a work permit and a social security along with the uh, adjustment of status application. And usually what happens about six to eight months afterwards, you'll get your social security and your work permit um, while the process is pending and until you get permanent residence. But make sure that you qualify, make sure you qualify in every way, uh, and uh, before you go ahead and apply, that's the best thing you can do. Um, so let's see, any more questions? What if the person have green card for 18 years and it expires, can apply for citizenship? Great question, Shelly and Moody. Um, yes, yeah, so when a card expires, it doesn't mean that your permanent residence expires. What it means though, is that evidence of your permanent residence has expired. So yes, you can still go ahead and apply for citizenship, even with an expired card, but keeping, and now we say that's generally speaking. Now I want to stress though, all the information here I'm giving you is not personal legal advice. It's general information. There may be specific circumstances in an individual's um, situation that may make the information I'm giving you different. That is where a, a legal consultation is necessary to make sure you're getting that personal uh, legal advice and you're not, um, you're not, you know, going off of just general information. Um, so if I live in the Caribbean, but want to move to the U S how can I obtain a green card? So you have to Sanjay Budram, you have to qualify in some way. 
Do you qualify through an employer? Is an employer willing to sponsor you? Is a fam are you do you qualify through a qualifying family member who is a US citizen or green card holder? Qualifying um relatives are usually the spouse, the US citizen spouse, a P US citizen or green card holder parent, a US citizen sibling. Those are an and a US citizen son or daughter 21 and up. Those are um, the relatives who can sponsor their family members to come to the USA. The timeline may be different though. It may take years. It may take about a year. So make sure, um, so if that's a way that you could qualify, then explore those options further. Um, also, if you uh, don't have any ties and you want to try your luck at the diversity lottery, you can enter it and see if you're selected. If you're selected, you have a shot over a year period to get your permanent residence. How long does it take after you apply for citizenship on marriage base? I need to apply. So right now it's taking about 18 months on average. You could expect, I've seen it as long as uh, 24 months, even longer where there are situations where they're putting the cases in extended review. So um, that is basically the timeline. Could be shorter, but expect about an average of 18 months. Um, I'm from Uganda and I want to apply for American visa, but my passport isn't strong. So you definitely need a passport to be able to get a visa. But in addition to that, the most important part of getting the visa is showing that you have strong ties to Uganda that will compel you to return to Uganda after a temporary visit. Um, okay, so yep, so Tia, yep. So it is. it sounds like an American um, and visitor's visa. And in that case, it's more about your strong ties to your home country. Do you have to wait 365 days before you get your EAD? So on no, uh, no, it depends uh, on what you're applying for. In some cases, there is a wait period, such as with asylum, but in other cases, uh, no. So in marriage-based cases, so it all depends, child Carter, on um, how you're applying. I have a green card. I need to apply for uh, C ship. My green card is marriage-based. It's been three years. How long? Um, Okay, uh, so let's. All right. Um, so I have a green card. I need to apply for citizenship. My green card is marriage based. It's been three years. How long for citizenship? So if it's been three years since you've had your green card and you've been married to your US citizen for three years, then you should be able to apply. You want to make sure that you check, uh, you know, get a consultation, check to make sure you qualify in every other way. But if you um, if you are married to a U.S. citizen, you've been married to the U.S. citizen for three years and you've had your green card for three years, then you can generally apply. Um, can my legally adopted son petition for green card for me? Um, so it depends on now if your if your son uh, if you adopted your son you legally adopted your son then you are their parent and you would qualify. Um, but it depends on what you know. If the son if your son is twenty one and up a U.S. citizen then you would qualify as long as you can show that you're legally his uh, parent. Shelly and Moody, you're welcome. So if the conditional green card expires, I can still file for permanent green card without being deported. So great question, get legal advice. So if you have a conditional green card um, and you're in a situation where it expired, but you, you qualify for a waiver, that is a way and you should do it because listen, the consequences can be more severe. It's better to uh, apply for a waiver at the USCIS than end up in immigration court. Now, when I say a waiver, if you got divorced, if you are in a situation where you got separated, your spouse uh, mistreated you, subjected you to extreme cruelty and even abused you physically, verbally, uh, mentally, financially, that can be a way to get around applying along with the spouse and applying for this waiver to apply on your own. Now, the good thing about this waiver too is that you can apply for it any at any time before, during, or after the
the application period. So at this point, I would say get legal advice to determine what your options are. It's better to do that now than to end up in immigration court. Nickel Plated, you are very welcome and thanks for the compliment. That's exactly why I'm here. I'm here to give information. I'm here to give you the information you need to empower yourself and to really decide whether you need further assistance, which I highly recommend. You start with a legal consultation to get legal advice. It's very much worth it to do that because you walk out of a consultation, a good consultation, knowing what you qualify for, your options, how to approach your situation, and whether you indeed need representation going forward. If you're in the Caribbean country and your passport expires, can you fly uh, with paper? So um, now usually no. What you will likely have to do is go to the embassy and um, they will issue you like a, a type of emergency type of visa or like a day a passport. Um, now I don't know where you're from. I'm talking on the US side. If you're from another um, country, you'll definitely need a valid passport and you'll have to deal with your country to decide uh, to determine how they can issue you a passport fast to travel on. So thanks everyone for your questions. I'm going to head back to work, but it was a pleasure. All your questions were great questions. I also gave you a little um, tidbit information about applying for US citizenship. I think I gave you enough to determine whether you should at least explore whether you um, uh, you qualify for US citizenship. I can't stress enough, now is a good time to go ahead and apply. You can call 561-405-4889 to schedule a consultation with me to get further personal legal advice because all the information here I gave you is general information, it's not personal legal advice. So you must make sure you get legal advice to make a decision and to avoid mistakes. That can be very helpful. Um, now, you can go to the link in my bio if you would like further assistance. Um, and if you want to learn more about me, you want to learn more about me as a, U as a U.S. immigration attorney, what do I do, who have I helped, what cases do I take, you can do that. You can call right now. There's a scheduling coordinator who is available between 9.30 a.m. and 11 p.m. to take your calls and to schedule your consultation. So there's plenty of time to call, so do it. My phone lines are open 24 seven, so you can always call and leave your information for a scheduling coordinator to schedule that appointment. Now I'm here every day and I am here sometimes even in multiple times a day. I will be back later on today in the night so you have more opportunities to ask your questions um, later on tonight. Uh, so follow me and as soon as you see me go live, you can hop on with me and ask your questions. Thanks so much everyone and have a great um, day. Uh, okay, so I have one more here. And I had a spouse verbal and mental abuse after filing for AOS. So um, they had uh, definitely schedule a consultation because there is a way if they are doing this to you you don't have to put up with it there is a way to apply on your own even when you have a pending adjustment of status application and sometimes it's safer to do that because what i have found with men, many of my clients they start the process with their abusive spouse and then that spouse ultimately sabotages their process because at the end of the day sometimes it's in the best interest of the abusive spouse not for the, the spouse to get the green card and so they go to the interview they play games they pretend they don't know um you know some of your information you get denied and they're quite happy with that so if you you can be married you can stay stay married and you know because i know it's a complicated situation you can still be married and go through a separate process by yourself based on the verbal abuse. This is confidential. Nobody has to know that you're going through this process. It's there to protect you. Call, schedule a consultation. Yes, the consultations come with a fee, TB, CAM. It's $150 for up to an hour. But as I said before, it is well worth the time and the money because you go into a, con a come out of a consultation 
knowing what you qualify for, your options, whether you need further assistance, you avoid mistakes, devastating mistakes, and you can walk out with me as your attorney should you need that. So it's very important. So um, how do you apply for a work permit? You will need to qualify for some sort of other immigration benefit. Usually there are, for example, applying for an adjustment of status, applying for certain visas like the T visa or the U visa, um, applying for DACA. When you're applying for certain immigration benefits, it allows you to have a work permit either while the process is going through or by the end of the process. So very important. Jay Hines, uh, Hind, it's very nice to see you. Thanks for saying hi. So um, very important to first evaluate what do you qualify for in order to get the work permit. Thanks again for your questions and call, schedule a consultation. You will walk out knowing and being empowered and knowing um, your options going forward. Have a great day. Follow me and I will be back. So it's not your last time to ask questions. You will always see me here coming on live to answer your questions. Have a good one, everyone. I'll see you later on. Bye.